live every day from 2 to 6 p.m. Real Raw Radio on 102.5 The Bone. It's the Mike Calter Show on 102.5 The Bone. Damn right it is. How emasculating is it for Spanish to have to go get Martin to bring him in mm. after Martin beat him up so badly in the punch out? I got to tell you, Martin looks fantastic. Yeah. He's tan. He's in great shape. That's how what a champ looks like. How come when I say it about Mo, it's gay, but when yeah. you say it about Martin, it's not gay? Because oh, it's true. Look, look at him. You do look fantastic. Looks great. That's how emasculating he... Spanish that you have to go get Martin <laughs> after he beat you up. I got to tell you, not emasculating at all because every time I see him, it's like he's getting better and better shape. Yeah. Oh, you wish. He was fat when he fought you oh. and he killed you. <laughs> he had cuts in his cuts. He didn't even train. <laughs> he said he broke his right hand so <laughs> before he even went in there. I didn't think people could have that many abs. <laughs> he was drunk when he fought you. Yeah, yeah right. What's up, buddy? Good morning. I wish hey. I was drunk. I wouldn't have felt when he hit me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for your patience. I'm sorry we, we ran late. Today's a, an interesting day with the whole Kaepernick situation. Situation, which, of course, you know we're probably going to ask you about. Did you? What happened? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> real, real quick, did somebody, uh, have you ever had a conversation about the national anthem with anybody in the NFL when you played? Never. 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 We just stood, you know. Uh, do you, uh, how long, how old were you when you came to this country? I was nine. And then you were, pl- how old were you when you played? When you probably were- 20, 21. Okay, so, so in your head, are you like, I love America. Are you? Are you still Argentina's my home? No. Well, you know, I always uh, I appreciate where I come from, my my culture, my family. But I also I'm a, I'm American now. I've been here most right. of my life, and I appreciate everything this country's given me and given my family. So, for me to watch guys in a way, for me, it's kind of disrespectful what they're doing because. I don't think they've ever left the United States and they don't know what it's like not right. to have freedom. Sure. If you leave and you go on vacation, then you look, you see the good parts of countries. Yeah. Go to the real part right, of the country. Right. Then you come back to the United States and then you're going to stand and you're going to thank every veteran. You're going to thank every uh-huh. military person, police, because the freedoms we have here, com- and I know there's issues, but it's nothing compared to some of these countries. Yeah, I, I certainly agree with that. But... Uh, do you do you, can you think of anything that the NFL said to you that you couldn't do or or had to do that you were like, do we really have to do like like when they make everybody wear those pink things for breast cancer? I I am all for that, but it seems like after a while it's like too much. I'm like I I could do the shoes or something. We don't need everything. You know what I mean? Like anything, I, maybe not uniform related, but is there anything that they made you do that you were like? I don't like this. Well, not not that I can remember, but I know you know being a kicker that you have a little more freedom because we can wear different shoes. With, like I know there's a there's a color uh, where you had to wear either black or red shoes right. at the time. So they have they they force you to wear a, a sort of sort certain uniform where you have to pull your socks up. So they keep everything uniform. So they don't want guys to be individuals. Which in a way I think that's kind of wrong. Uh, each guy has to, you know, you play for a team, but you also have to express what you want to express. Sure. You know? And especially for a kicker, you may have a certain shoe that you're like, man, I can kick great with these. Well, they I can have to do wear that. They? they have the right to do it. Well, they, the one thing, though, they did, uh, you can't alter your shoe. And, you know, soccer players tie their shoe under the shoe. Mm-hmm. And that's the first thing the NFL told me. One of the referees told me you can't tie your shoe like that. Which really? I had tied it like that my whole life. Yeah. So that was the other thing. It was felt kind of weird. I did it for that game, and then I tied it back to normal, and nobody ever said anything. Did so you ever just, wear the uh, two different shoes? I did, but they were both soccer shoes. I never wore a football shoe. I wore like a, a six stud on the left and then a, a regular molded shoe on the right. Oh, but, yeah. But it was different, but they're the same shoe, basically. Mm. That's very interesting. I, I have been down on the uh, sidelines before, and one day I finally spotted the guy who goes around and checks off the uniform violations every week. Every week there's something. There's a ton. Of, there's a list, but what's crazy some guys will rather take the fine than yeah. change. They'll because they'll tell you, "Look, your socks Those are, guys too are high. called millionaires." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely, but I, I still think yeah. not, not the smartest thing, even if you're a millionaire. Uh, I, you, I, you probably did this. We used to do this, so we used to have to get checked before soccer to make sure that we had molded cleats, and that we would get checked by a referee, and then we'd go over and put on our screw in cleats. Oh yeah, those. yeah, because they already checked them. We were like, "All right, they're yeah, not going to check, check them again." again yeah. Right, right. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> I, I thought Jim McMahon in the uh, in the eighties. With the Chicago Bears was great when he was wearing the headbands, oh, yeah. because uh, he, you can take a fine for that because he's he's up in his stock outside of football way more by putting them on and becoming a superstar. Right, and that's that's a superstar. But yeah. if you you know if a kicker does that, we get fined every week. We're gonna go broke. <laughs> <laughs> we're going broke. How about Sap though? When he had the big afro, he used to take his helmet off after every play so that people would see his face. He's like, here I am out there becoming the 
you know, the biggest name on the team, and I'm not getting the recognition I deserve because I'm wearing these helmets, and they don't want to stick it out. You take it off, and he kept getting in trouble for it, but he kept doing it after every play. Right. That's what they, that's what they, they always talk about, how we're not recognizable compared to other sports because of the helmet and all the equipment. So, literally, you know, a lot of times people meet you outside of football. They think, oh, you look bigger, you look smaller. Yeah. They don't really know what size you are, even what you look like, unless you do that. And Sap's a smart guy. You know, he knew how to get his uh, name out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I, what was your favorite Sap moment? Well, my favorite story is he saved my life, you know, <laughs> because in uh, my my rookie year, we're supposed to feed the, uh, as the round that you get drafted, right. you bring breakfast. Yeah. So I got lazy and I said, look, the guys that cooked every morning, I said, look, bring something different because, you know, I don't feel like going to Dunkin' Donuts, bringing coffee. So just bring it in, get in and get out. So they did that. And apparently they changed the whole menu where the linemen were hating it. Oh. So they were looking for me. So as soon as I get to the facility, they're looking for me. So I'm, like, I'm hiding in my locker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to die. And Sap goes in the locker room starts screaming at everybody. Nobody touches the kicker. That's my kicker and blah, blah, blah. So, so everybody left me alone. So ever yeah. since then, I'm like, Sap's my guy. And, it, and, it, and he liked me right away. I don't know why, but he liked me right away, which if you're on Sap's right – Good side, yeah. He's the best, you know. So you don't want to get on his right, no. wrong side. But I love that. He's he, he liked you right awesome. away because you were scoring points for the team when nobody else was. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, look, I, I I'm telling you right now. But, but by the way, real before we get to that, uh, my to me, my favorite sap thing is him running through the the other team's. Oh, that's, that's, <laughs> I mean, that's such a that's such a balls. Move. I was thinking about that the other day, actually. How like that fired everybody up. We yeah. need guys like that on our team now. You know, somebody that can look disrespect the other team a little bit, make him get him off their game because that's what sports is about. You know, you try to get the other guy. Everybody's talented. So if you can get him off their game, get him thinking about something something else, right. that's what Sap did. I mean, that was amazing. And, and they we, say, like, a lot of the greats, like especially in basketball, like Bird and Jordan, those guys were such good crap talkers because everybody's great at that level. But, yeah, if you can get oh, them that's where Sap they're thinking Favre about. Yeah. stuff was great back in the day. And uh, uh, and then when the guy from Green Bay, the coach, went after him and, and that whole conversation, I mean, those are the fun times. Uh, I missed that. Somebody was uh, one of the guys, a sports guy from Honestly Channel Ten, tweeted out something the other day about Gerald McCoy. He said in any other town they'd be building a statue to Gerald McCoy, and I was like, I don't know. I don't, I'm not. I, I don't love Gerald McCoy, and I, I think he's a good player. I don't love him, uh, and I I certainly don't see him being that kind of guy like those guys were, like Sap was, like Simeon was, like Culpepper was. You know, I, I'm not getting that. But that's that's what happens when you had a guy like Sap. Right. Now everybody compares you to that. Sure. So I don't think anybody can love, live up to a Sap. You know, We're due, though. We're due. Those generations, they come around. You know what I mean? They're, uh, right, but they're in all their teams. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need them to on our team. Will you get a call for the Ring of Honor? Probably not. I'm a I'm kicker. Just, I'm I, a kicker. I don't care. I don't, <laughs> but you're, the value that you were to this team you weren't just a kicker. I mean, you were the goal scorer. You were the point scorer for this team during some really uh, pivotal years. I, I I think that they should give you the recognition that you deserve. Well, I got like it. The in, town does. I got it in college, so so I was a plus. I never thought a kicker would get it, but we but we also put a punter in there at yeah. college. So yeah, <laughs> but, you know, but you know, I mean, so, who knows? They, you know. That's a team that appreciates their players. No, I'm. I listen. I'm gonna lobby for it. Well, I appreciate that. The first no, player I, that comes up that I don't feel like belongs there, I'm going to be like, mm, go right to the first. Perfect. Yeah. I appreciate that. No, yeah. it, it'd be an honor, though, you know, because I still love the Bucks. Actually, I'm going to be doing the uh, uh, Spanish broadcast for the Bucks. You I'm, are? I'm oh, start- that's awesome. <laughs> I'm starting. This is, su- Sunday will be my first game, so I'm excited oh, about that. Oh, so it, how it, much experience do you have with that? Well, I've done a few Super Bowls. That's about it. So. Oh, really? <laughs> but uh, Can yeah. I give you a, p- a piece of advice, not from a radio no, guy, actually. as a listener, not a Spanish broadcast listener, <laughs> but don't try not to stop talking. I, when I'm watching, uh, I mean, obviously you can take, you know, let the play play out. But when I'm watching uh, football, like preseason football, and they have the the uh, uh, B squad in there, it, and not that Ron, I mean, Rondé does a good job, but it sometimes it's just so dull because they talk and stop, and it's like they're grasping for things. Just keep, be, even if you're BSing about your days in the game, it's still more entertaining than hearing nothing. What what I think is uh, uh, nice about the Spanish broadcast, the enthusiasm. I don't know if you saw it on ESPN when they score. Yeah. So they're going to, the, the play-by-play guys are going to announce it more like a soccer game. Oh, I love it. So you want to get that uh, press. Yeah. Get your boobazella. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you but, do it with? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna meet them tomorrow. So. Oh really? <laughs> it's like they did a dry run uh, Thursday. I couldn't do it with them, but I got to meet some of the guys. And uh, it's a it's a local uh, Spanish station, and I'm excited about oh, it. Oh, good for you, yeah, man! Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, this is Martin Gramatica, who is not only a uh, 
a, a great uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneer, but he is the reigning punch out champion. That's right. As he destroyed Spanish in the uh, last punch out. This one here, this next one, may be the bloodiest uh, punch out that we've had. Now, I understand you are going out as champ and retiring. You have no interest in defending your title. I mean,. I would love to be able to, but my wife would kill me. She already threatened my life, so I'd rather you know make you guys upset and not her. No, no I <laughs> no, get that. As a married man, I understand what I'm, you're saying. I'm good with one and done. That was fun to do. I mean, the fight wasn't as hard as the training. I trained like I was trying to like fight Mike Tyson. Right. I just didn't want to go out there and embarrass myself. So that I don't think I could go through that again at my age. You were you with know, the guys at Wolfpack, right? Wolfpack, yeah. yeah. They trained me out there, and and um, that's where the belt lies, isn't it? Yeah, they have it there? The belt, yeah. So so now we have a vacated belt, which makes Spanish the number one contender, and uh, it, it that spot is open now. Danny, kid who does middays on Hot One Hundred One Five, he stepped up. There's real no anger there. But the idea that Danny is, has boxed before, and they're both about the same size. And he's kind of laughing about it. Like, I yeah, can't like believe Spanish is, you know, number one contender. And their logo is purple. And if we have to hang the hang our, I mean, giving you the belt, was you're an athlete. Okay, <laughs> I don't feel so bad about it. But if this kid takes the belt and it's in the room next door oh, to us, I'm going to kill Spanish. Well, I see Spanish working hard, though. I mean, he's training. Yeah. I hear about how much he's training. And uh I mean, he hit me a few times, so I know he can he can hit. So I I, I I'd be his biggest fan. I'll oh, be on maybe you could be in his corner. I'll be I'll yeah, be in his corner. corner. That's for sure. Uh, Martin Gramatica had said earlier while we were talking to him that he came over here from Argentina, and when you've seen other countries and the way that they are, you want to stop and thank every military person and uh, you know for what they've done. And instead of just saying it, the Gramatica family really does it. Uh, they are doing the sixth annual Gramatica Family Foundation Kickball Tournament, and what this is a great event. Whether you play or not, uh, I am not playing. In fact, I uh, would say the last time I played has given me lifelong injuries <laughs> because I'm so out of shape. But it is a great day uh, to go out there and hang out. They have plenty of stuff for little kids to do. They have stuff for big kids to do. You can do some drinking and hang out. It's a. It's usually. Is it going to be at Ed Radis again? It's at Ed Radis. Uh, same format. Forty teams and a very big kids area. Yeah. For us, it's important. You know, we want our kids to understand what the military do for us and be able to thank them. So, and every event we do, we want to have kids there because that's the future of our country. You know? Absolutely. So we love having them. There. Absolutely. And and uh, it's a fun day. They have they have silent auctions. Uh, is Charlie there again this year? Charlie will be there. Charlie Belcher will be your MC. Uh, the date is October twentieth. It's at the Ed Radis Sports Complex. And uh, now, are there still teams available? Oh yes, yeah. So, yeah, we just opened registration oh, okay. uh, a week ago, so there's still plenty. Well, it'll of teams go quick available. though. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so it usually goes pretty quick. That's the fastest thing that that we fill up is the teams because everybody and it's a lot of it's repeat repeat teams. You know, right. Keep coming back, same groups. Uh, I realize that kickball is a lot harder when you're an adult <laughs> than when you're in eighth grade. Eighth grade, I was awesome. Now, not so much. We will have a team out there, though. Yeah, yeah. we will definitely. I'll have a team be there, out there as, a, as general manager and owner of the team. I will be. I'm gonna there. make some cuts this year. Yeah. Last year it was a little bit kind of open to everything. This year I'm gonna, you know, try to try to get some yeah. athletic representation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will just be there in uniform only. Bring in some ringers <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> I'll uh, bring my morning juice just to keep everything <laughs> good to go. Yeah. Um, let me tell you that if you want to do it, where do you go? What's the website? It's GrammaticaFamilyFoundation.org. GrammaticaFamilyFoundation.org. I'll put it up on our Facebook page, and you can register. And uh, if you don't want to play, come on out there and uh, help raise money for the Grammatica Family Foundation. They build homes for veterans, mortgage-free homes. So they usually get a piece of land donated. Then they have uh, their company goes in, and through their hard work and donations and volunteers, they build a home for a combat wounded veteran, and then that veteran comes and says, usually it's a surprise. They bring a guy in and say, hey, it's a, you're a finalist. We're going to bring you in. And then when they bring in, they say, uh, you know, congratulations. We're really giving you this house. And they give it to them mortgage free. So now this guy who maybe lost a limb or was wounded or girl uh, wounded in uh, combat gets to know that they get to live their life now without the uh, the hassle of uh, uh, the burden of having to still get out there and work and pay for everything and, and furnish too, right? Yeah, yeah. a lot of times if uh, they need the furniture. One of the not, the good things is the the builder that we partner up is uh, Joe Gibbons. He does an awesome job because we select the veteran first and then build it to their needs. Right. So it's all handicap accessible: the kitchen, the the showers, 
everything. And in some of the cases, that, you know, the, the, the veterans have prosthetics, but they need to take it off when they get home and rest and be in a wheelchair. So this gives them a chance to do that and be super independent. Yeah, it's very similar to when you watch that, uh, that show where they were building the house for the family. Stream home makeover. Yeah, yeah, they get to know the family and then right. they build the house uh, to them. Uh, this is great. And I don't, this is one of the great things about the athletes in this community is that they really do care about and give back to the community. I mean, um, what's his what's his name? The little tiny running back that you played with, uh, Warwick Dunn. <laughs> Warwick Dunn uh, did a pro, still does a program here yes. uh, with single mothers where he gives away homes. Yeah. Uh, it's a different type of program, but it's it's great to see people giving back. This is by far the best because everybody wants to help a veteran. Certainly, somebody that was wounded. And it's not just giving it to them and they only have to pay for it for a couple. This is it. They walk in and it's their house and they don't have to worry about uh, the finances of it at all. And that's that's what was so cool about the old Bucks when you were talking about the old group. Yeah. We had Dungy as our leader. He he preached to us what the community does for us or how important it is to give back to the community. And that's where I learned about charity work. Because when you're in college, you don't have time to do that. You go yeah. from school to training. I didn't even know it existed. So I, you know, I had guys like Derek Brooks. <clears throat> work done all started they did so much stuff in the community that it's just it's contagious you know you just learn from those guys and then just follow their footsteps so it, it was amazing to have those guys as as like role models to follow there's a guy coming in here on wednesday who's a friend of the show uh who you may have met before titus o'neill do you know titus yes i've seen him yes titus and i are facebook friends in addition to being real life friends and his facebook page makes me feel bad about myself like i feel like i like you want to talk about a guy who's maximizing his fame to do good in the world. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. <laughs> like I, uh, like a lot of times, like Robin Zander from Cheap Trick lives here. Cheap Trick's a huge rock and roll hall of fame band, but because he lives here, he's probably asked to do everything. And I gotta tell you, after a while, that probably gets annoying. Titus O'Neil, I've probably never said no to anything. <laughs> I mean, he can't. I can't. I've seen him at everything, and the difference he makes. Uh, in this community and worldwide because he's got fans worldwide is phenomenal. That's somebody who really appreciates his life and knows what it means to give back. So uh, God bless all of you guys. I now feel like I'm less of a human being. But I will be out there that day. Well, I appreciate helping it. Helping to support it. We thank you guys for coming out. I know it's, uh, I know it's, it's not easy. You guys get asked to do a lot of stuff, too. But oh, your, I support, don't, listen, your support is always awesome. Kickball stuff's fun to do. <laughs> I know. You know, uh, you know there's, there's a lot of events that we are asked, like I like I get asked to do the Great American Teaching all the time, yeah. which I love to do to go to talk to kids. However, um, like it's like third graders don't even know who I am, and I go there and everything. It's like I talk for a couple of minutes, and then they go, "All right, anybody have any questions?" And like, do you know Justin Bieber? <laughs> have you ever met Eminem? Do you know the yeah. oh, yeah. Yes, no, that's, no. That's, that's no. the only time I utilize my Super Bowl ring. When I go do that, oh, you bring the oh, ring. Yeah. I bring the ring. Yep. And the, I take a picture for the kids, and then I print it out and give it back, give it to them. So uh, I don't really have to do much talking. Awesome. I use I use my kids as the uh, model, so I dress them up as a Buccaneer player. <laughs> <laughs> and they get all excited because they're my assistant. That's great. They, they uh, get a picture. So other than that, I never even touch the ring. I <laughs> I love to do it. I just feel like um, it's my own insecurity that I'm not. The kids aren't relating to me. They don't care. But then again. They're, they're like, I always go, well, who else is coming in? They're like, well, uh, Billy's father is a bookkeeper, and uh, <laughs> Stacy's mom is, uh, I'm like, I got this one. I'm okay. I, know, I had the same thing. I had an accountant coming after me. He looked at me like, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> what do I do now? So I waited for that moment. He wasn't accounting on you being there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, my son was in, like, first grade. His school said, would you have any interest? And I was like, oh, hell yeah. Time <laughs> to be cool, Dad. And then I showed up. Effortless. I dr showed up there. I was like, I'm going to dress cool. I'm going to be cool. I pulled up, and there was uh, one of his his uh, students' parents worked for the Homeland Security. They had a tank out there. <laughs> and I was like, now I'm not cool. Now I'm not cool. You put your headphones back in the car. Yeah, yeah. I was like, maybe not. You guys don't want these CDs, uh, dude. Uh, and then my sister, though, my sister, when she's uh, younger than me and when she was in school, I showed up the first couple of years with American Idol contestants, and I was like, cool nice. guy. Yeah. No, I did, all, right. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, listen to me. Uh, we're, you're a great friend of the show. You're welcome here anytime. The Grammatica Family Foundation, sixth annual kickball tournament, Ed Radis Field, October 20th. Uh, GrammaticaFamilyFoundation.org is the website. Get on there. Get yourself a team. Go out and support it and help build the uh, 
uh, Mortgage Free Homes for Combat Wounded Veterans. A great thing you guys do. Thank you. I don't know why your brothers don't feel like they have to get up early and come in here. <laughs> they they have real jobs, I think. Yeah. <laughs> what does Bill do? <laughs> they, they they work with me, but they do pharmaceuticals. Both of them do. They're pharmaceuticals. Listen, leave their drug problems. Yeah. I don't Spanish does pharmaceuticals, too. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you need, Spanish. <laughs> Martin, uh, Martin said that he would be in your uh, corner supporting for you for... Uh, the fight. That actually I'm going to be your lot. biggest fan now that you're not punching me. So. <laughs> that means a lot to me. I appreciate that. You sure that. you don't want Ian there? I mean, I don't know. Uh, why not both? Why yeah, not oh, yeah, both? Yeah, yeah. All the bucks. Yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. He did say you look like you're looking like a little bit of a pussy, though. Well, I don't down. believe that he said that. No, I don't, yeah, yeah. That's before I fought him, not after. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Martin, thank you. We'll thank take you a guys. quick break, come back and wrap up the show. It's a Mike Calta show. It's 1025 The Bone. The Mike Calta Show on 1025 The Bone. Remember, when listening to The Bone at home using Alexa, you have to say 102.5 The Bone or else it won't work. Try it again. Alexa, play 102.5 The Bone. Now playing 102.5 The Bone. So remember, it's 102.5 The Bone for Tampa Bay's best talk radio. Real, raw radio.